today I want to talk to you about a different way of capturing interviews and that's recording them as audio rather than spending the time shooting them. It doesn't work for all projects and you've got to go into your project knowing that you're going to do this but in a lot of circumstances I found especially on shorter docs that this is a really nice formula and it can really help you be a lot more agile and streamlined in your work process. When we make short docs we're very used to spending time getting in, setting up lights and cameras and audio and finding the perfect interview shot and if we're doing all of that in a single day and we're also squeezing in a time to do our b-roll a good two to three hours can easily be burnt just by filming an interview. You know, filming requires a lot of kit, resources and time and often people. So we try and pack as much as possible into a single day. If you take the burden of shooting that interview away from that filming day, it frees you up and gives you a lot more time to focus on capturing all the other footage that will probably be more often used in the final edit than the interview. And especially in a lot of projects that I put out in the, in the past where we've shot interviews, in the actual edit that we ended up finalizing, you know, we might have only cut to the actual interview shot two or three times. It's not gonna be right for every single project, but for some projects, I really like to do this, especially if I'm working on my own. So I used this method on a doc I shared recently on the channel, it's called The Studio. I use The Studio not just as a physical space, but I use it as a space in a way to measure time. I only really had an afternoon to film with Sam the artist and I was testing out the great joy lenses so I basically just shot a ton of footage and sequences with him and then went away, spun through it all and essentially a couple of months later got him back into my studio here and just sat him down and recorded an interview for about 15 minutes and then cut that audio down and combined it with the images. And that process was a lot more efficient than having to manage all the video footage of the interview and obviously having to light and shoot an interview in the first instance. I see probably around five main benefits to using this technique, which I'm gonna go over now. If you're working on your own or even in a small crew, setting up an interview can be really time intensive. It requires lots of equipment, bringing it in, setting it up, finding where to do that, making sure it's quiet. Have that location locked off for, you know, probably a good two hours and make sure no one comes in uh, or out or disturbs you. When you're just recording audio, you know, all you need is a quiet space. It doesn't matter where you do it. You're not tied to a specific location. Also, you really don't need much of equipment to record an interview. You can even just do it on your phone. Come a long way in terms of um, recording audio. Even if it's not great, you can uh, tidy it up using a lot of AI tools now anyway. You can get the interview done in 20 to 40 minutes. And then you can spend the rest of the day focusing on capturing beautiful footage, B-roll, sequences that you need to underlay over the audio. And if you're saving time, then you're probably gonna be saving money. You know, it might mean a difference of uh, not having to hire a second operator or an assistant to help you out. Maybe you can rock up to the location without bringing lots of chunky lighting equipment. Um, and it might just allow you to work a little bit more efficiently on your own. Beaming loads of lights and standing behind a camera and barking questions at them. I think even the most confident speakers struggle in a situation like that. And that can really influence and affect the quality of the interview you record and the level of intimacy that you're able to achieve and how open they are on camera. Whereas if it's just two people and you're having more of a conversation with a small microphone in between you, I think it's a lot easier for people to open up. They're a lot less on, you know, on guard. I find the quality of the interview tends to be a lot more intimate and open than when you're recording it on camera. If you're making something that is highly stylized, you know, relying on really crafted visuals, experimental visuals, punchy editing techniques, cutting back to a static interview might not gel super well with the style of the piece that you're doing. So in this case, it might actually make more sense to invest time in getting your visual sequences than capturing an interview shot. So I actually did this in a previous project with the same artist, Sam. In this case, I did actually shoot an interview with him, but in the edit, I just didn't end up using it. We decided to make something that was a bit more experimental and responsive. Uh, and instead I just stripped the video out, cut uh, an audio piece of him talking from the interview, and then underlaid that over loads of sequences of footage, which we planned based on that audio. What if we stopped using traditional measurements, basically find a way to locate ourselves in time and space? If you know you're just getting an audio interview, you could even potentially record this before the shoot day, cut the audio down into your timeline, and then use this to sort of help design the shot list and sequences that you wanna get on your filming day. 
storyboarding your sequences and really dialing in the visual language of your film. I'd really recommend getting some decent portrait shots of your subject as you know you won't have that direct connection with them, your audience won't be seeing them talking, so just getting some shots of the subject looking into the camera or off the camera might just help that void left by not recording or filming an interview. Good sounding audio is probably the most important part of recording an interview and I think when you're starting out a lot of people overlook how important audio is. Recording decent audio obviously becomes more of a challenge and generally more expensive when you're filming because you're having to invest time and resources into hiding the microphones. That's probably going to be lav mics or you know positioning expensive boom mics just out of shot. You're just not going to get very close pickup of their audio which can affect the intimacy of the recording. You're also just not bound to a single location. There's so many times where I filmed uh, interviews and we've been tied to a single location. Maybe that's the room that's been booked or the location that's been booked and there's been something wrong. There's aeroplanes going back and forth overhead or someone's mowing the lawn outside and you can't really do much about it. When you're not tied to filming in a location, you're obviously a lot more agile and flexible when it comes to recording. The quality of the audio recording that you're capturing is one of the things that really helps uh, your audience connect with the subject. So if they are close mics and the interview sounds intimate, it could really help bring your audience closer to the story that you're communicating. But this technique definitely isn't suitable for all projects and it's probably only going to be useful for a small handful of projects. The problem with having just an audio interview is obviously that you do have this sort of sense of the disembodied voice. Seeing someone talking on camera, you know, in many cases does provide the viewer with a sense of immediacy, which doesn't always come across if they're just hearing their voice and not seeing them speak. I think if someone is talking about something very emotional or personal or saying something very powerful, then being able to have access to them and to see them when they're saying that and expressing themselves is probably going to be a bit more powerful than just hearing their voice alone. But you know, not necessarily. You might be able to combine a really powerful audio interview with some really striking, compelling or abstract or experimental visuals um, where the visuals are saying just as much as the voice that you're hearing. I think also if you only have an interview audio, you do just need to be really careful with the B-roll footage that you're getting because that is the only footage that you're going to be able to rely on. You know, sometimes when you're working on a project, the interview can act somewhat as a bit of a safety track that you can cut back to if you don't feel you've got anything suitable to cut to. And it also can just help sort of break an edit up. You can only get so far underlaying audio with visuals before an audience might start to get a little bit bored or you might just have to work a little bit harder with your visuals. But I think if you are shooting or designing some really compelling imagery, it works really nicely. Finally, this is actually a technique I use on a lot of the animated projects I work on as well. Uh, where possible, I, I prefer doing this because it really helps give animated projects a more documentary feel. Usually with animations, you know, you write scripts, you record a voiceover, and then you send that to the animator and they do their thing with the visuals. But recording an audio interview, I think, can provide a much more intimate and engaging narration track for animations. You know, you're actually hearing someone speak and express themselves rather than sort of something that's written for the page and then being narrated underneath some visuals. Using interview audio comes with all the trappings of natural speech that you don't quite get when you're writing a script for the page. It doesn't always quite translate or sound that natural, unless you're really good at script writing. I spent three months working at CERN as an undergraduate student. The first time I went out there, this thing was so big and so complex. I was kind of an ant in an anthill, as it were. And I just thought, this thing's never gonna work. And yet, you know, they switched the Large Hadron Collider on and it worked as smoothly as I've ever seen any accelerator startup. It's an incredible machine, an incredible team of people. With animated project, doing this sort of technique does impose certain risks that you can't control. Uh, as much as you can when you script something, it's much easier to have a script that you can sign off with a client, that you can time and know how long it's going to be and make sure you're squeezing all the information in there. But I think where possible and when you plan for using this interview technique uh, and you know the points that you need to express in the interview, it works really well. And then floating the opposite direction, coming to join me is first Sergei and then my other crewmates who are up there. And we just stay around this window and together, we don't say anything in my dream, we're just there and I can hear them breathing and I can feel their warmth because we're really quite close to each other and we're all just looking out of the window. One of my favourite animated projects uh, where I've used this technique was when I interviewed British astronaut Helen Sharman. 
uh, working with the animator Andrew Kozravani, uh, and that animation ended up getting us a Vimeo staff pick probably about 10 years ago now. Um, but I also had another really lovely project where I interviewed a physicist called Susie Sheehy, and she's someone who's really cool. She designs particle accelerators for a living. If people meet me at parties, they normally ask me what I do, and I say, I'm a researcher, I'm a scientist. Um, and if I said I was a physicist, people would sort of slowly back away. During that interview, she just gave us some really nice personal colour and insight and off-the-cuff remarks that we just wouldn't have been able to fit into a narrated script. And it just gave a lot more authenticity and personality to quite a technical animation, which I love. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope this video is useful and maybe gives you some inspiration. I think it's really useful to experiment and switch things up in your creative projects and try something new. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not, please consider subscribing to this channel. I'm Ed, and until next time, see ya.